Oh, we'll start with Barrack upon, upon Tweed. Now, I haven't kited here all that much, um, but it is potentially a really nice location. Um, I think it'd be particularly nice in a kind of east-south-east, just behind this sandbar here. Um, as I say, I haven't kited here, but I believe you can park here. Um, it does look like an amazing spot. You know, could also cover um, southwesterlies. Um, you know, with the enclosed harbour area you've got here. Um, but I do reckon there's probably a fair bit of um, traffic going through the shipping channel here. Um, so you've probably got to be a little bit careful. This is a spot I would really like to try, but haven't yet. And yeah, I can't really give that much advice on that. Just to say that it is there, it does look cool, and I really do fancy it. So, let's move on. Um, so, moving down... Um, we've of course got Holly Island here. Now Holly Island looks like an amazing spot to go and kite, but unfortunately it's a nature reserve. Um, so yeah, if you do kite there you can expect to get some um, the Coast Guard or the um, Natural England on your back and I'd recommend not going there. It does look amazing though with all of these um, lovely um, lovely lagoons and sandy bays, it looks absolutely awesome but um, yeah I'd recommend about against um, riding there. Moving further south again we've got Boodle Bay and this is a, a really popular spot um, because it covers uh, the westerly wind directions um, at high tide basically this entire bay fills in this spit of sand is completely completely covered so you've largely kind of got the wind kind of blowing straight out to sea um, at low tide there's very very little water left uh, to the bay there's two places you can go so there's this crossroads here um, and people tend to park up around here and you can walk down through and then you can rig up in this area here and the other option is to go up the road a little bit further um, you can park up along here and uh, along here and um, you can walk down through the gate here there's another gate here uh, you can walk up it's a bit more of a trek this one um, and generally people rig up out along here um, as I say it is a bit more of a trek but there is there's an old pier here and when the wind's westerly it comes over the top of this pier tends to get a little bit um, disturbed and there's also some rocks down downwind here that you need to be careful of so I'd really recommend going past, going past there and at least rigging up here, but probably you know, going up here where there's, there's more sand even at high tide. Um, on a spring high tide, um, pretty much most of the sand disappears, um, and the only real place you, that you can launch and land is here and you know, back down here um, and this area here. Um, in terms of hazards, as you can see, there's there's a fair load of rocks here. Um, there's obviously the jetty here, uh, but one of the biggest thing to mention is the tide. Um, basically, in a spring high tide, the water comes rushing in and rushing back out again. Um, so it, it is possible that you can get carried out to sea by the tide. And what has happened a few times is people have got stuck over this side and with the incoming tide have actually got swept off their feet trying to walk back across um, and swept up further into the bay so it is something you really need to be a little bit cautious of um, you know there's usually people there and they're keeping an eye out but um, yeah something to be aware of really um, but besides that it is an awesome spot um, beautiful beautiful water um, but it's you know in terms of access it's, it's not the easiest you know both entrances and a bit of a bit of a trek um, and this hill can be a bit of a killer um, after you've had a long session and you're trudging up with you know three kites and two boards um, in terms of wind directions um, basically it pretty much does everything from a southwesterly all the way around through the north to about a northeasterly um, perhaps an east northeast um, yep yeah, so covers a really really wide range of, of wind directions um, and when, that's why it's so popular. Okay, so moving on, we've got Bamburgh Castle um, and Bamburgh Beach. 
Um, there's um, a couple of car parks here, both of which have got height restrictions. So if you've got um, if you've got a large van, you're going to struggle to get into to these two. Um, there are some little laybys that you can park along, which don't have height restrictions, so you can park on there. Um, but yeah, most most people park in one of these two car parks. Um, in terms of Bambra, this is an awesome beach in the winter when you get the the northerly swells. Um, there tends to always be a bit of a current running down the beach, which um, you know can be a bit problematic when the wind's really marginal. Um, best direction for this, I really like. Um, I think it's a uh, north northeast, so that's coming straight on onto the beach here. Um, that you get loads of. Um, flat water in between the waves and you can just run up and down the beach looking at the castle it's really really nice another nice direction is west northwest and again that's for the winter swells where you've kind of got um, the, uh, the waves coming in you've got perfect down the line conditions in a west northwest but pretty much anything from west northwest all the way around to um, east, maybe not east southeast maybe easterly um, is a good direction for Bambra. Pretty much there's always room to launch and land um, at Bambra, there's always, there's always some sand there. Uh, so it, yeah, it's a pretty good location. And um, yeah, it's, it's quite a shallow shelving bay, so it, you know, it doesn't, the waves tend to be quite, quite nice and not too dumpy. Okay, so I think that's for Bambra, let's move on. Um, there is this uh, this little beach on the other side here which you can go to I never really kite there much there's a few beaches like this with this um, similar kind of northeasterly direction um, quite often when it's when it's kind of northeasterly you know people tend to be going to Bambra or Boodle um, but there are a few beaches like this which could be ridden um, so there's this one here there's also this one here just north of sea houses which some people um, ride at and then we move on to um, Boodle, uh, to Beadnell, which is just down here. Now Beadnell is another very, very popular beach. Um, it's got um, a car park here. Um, they've now started charging at the car park. It's like pound fifty currently um, for three hours or three pounds for all day. This beach gets very, very popular in the in the summer months on a on a bright sunny day. The, the whole car park can com be completely rammed and all of the neighbouring streets um, so you need to be a little bit cautious uh, when you're turning up you know on a, on a really uh, nice day when everyone else is going to flock there that also means that the water can be quite busy as well uh, it's very popular with you know swimmers and bodyboarders and um, you know, jet ski um, so yeah it's a popular beach and you know basically you you get what you'd expect from a popular beach really. Um, in terms of wind direction it's very very versatile. Basically you can do a south-southwest um, but unfortunately south-southwest comes over this hill here and it tends to make it very very gusty so it's not really all that good for kiting. Um, so generally you really want to be coming here in kind of southerlies, um, east-southeast, southeast, southeast um, when it starts getting easterly um, you can't really ride up this end because again the east wind is coming over this headland here um, but of course you can go further down the beach um, and ride further down here um, the beach is also really nice really shallow shelving um, has a really nice wave basically the wave um, breaks off off these off these reefs here and at low tide um, you get really nice protected waters right behind these reefs especially spring low tide beautiful really really nice in terms of in terms of launching and landing um, big spring high tides there's practically no beach there at all um, so it's not the best option for a big spring high tide anything over five meters there's going to be very very little beach um, so you, could, you really can't launch at high tide it's best coming you know an hour or so afterwards um, in order to get any beach there at all. You know, maybe if you've got a friend with you, you can sort it out, but um, yeah, it, it's best for um, you know, avoiding high tide when it's, when it's a spring. Um, one other thing is there is a, there is a nature sanctuary down here. Um, the, the rules are changing a little bit around here, but um, basically you can't kite around here 
um, when the birds are nesting, which tends to be usually May to September. Um, but generally the rest of the bay is okay. Uh, they are changing the rules a little bit. Um, in the last year it was basically you just had to avoid this area but now they're starting to ban walking along the beach uh, with dogs and things like that from anywhere like here or further. Um, but we'll you know we'll see how that changes over the coming over the coming years. Um, there is another place that you can ride here which is down um, the south end of Beedonal. Um, we tend not to do this all that much. Um, there is a, park, a car park here, you know, and it's better for those more northerly directions. Um, but people tend to go other places rather than come down the south end. Um, I don't really want, really know why. I think people are creatures of habit, really. Moving on down, we have Embleton. Embleton is absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful beach. Um, there's a couple of places you can park here. Um, there's, you can park on the road leading up to the golf course. Or there's another entrance way down here at the Dunstan Steads. Uh, again, you know, this is kind of east northeast facing, so great onshore conditions in east northeast, or anything um, swinging round in this this hemisphere. Um, you get really nice waves here. Um, it's a nice shallow shelving beach. Um, at high tide, I think I think there's always sand here at high tide. Um, but there are some rocks down here that you need to be careful of, and there's you know there's a lot of rocks around here. It is again a sort of another very picturesque beach with the Dunstanbury Castle over there. Um, yeah, one of my favourite little gems um, is um, Embleton, and it has lovely crystal green water, really really pretty, and not too popular actually. So let's move on down the coast. What have we got now? Um, so it tends to be a little bit rocky around these areas, so there's very few beaches that people actually ride regularly at. Um, the next one down is going to be Almuth. Now Almuth works in a south-southwest, as you can see it's pretty clean over here. There is a hill here, um, so that probably um, does disturb the wind somewhat. Again, not many people ride at Almuth. Um, there's a big car park here to give you access. Um, I think they do charge in the summer, but don't in the winter. Um, there's quite a nice little river mouth here, um, which can be quite fun to play in. But again, it's a, you know it's a another beach which is good in a southerly, all the way round through to your easterlies, um, and you know east northeast. Yeah, maybe not northeast, all the way up to east northeast up here. Um, but yeah, great big wide beach, um, not that popular, um, but and you know a good option and a pretty pretty location. Okay, let's move on. I think in in terms of Almuth, I think there's always beach here as well. Um, pretty much you can launch up at high tide, even if it's a spring. So, what have we got next? Um, okay, Druridge Bay is the next one. Um, now the one thing to watch out for at Druridge Bay is this country park here. Um, there is a visitor centre which is popular with tourists and we can't ride around this area here um, you know, due to the popularity of, of that area. So where we tend to go up here is actually up the north here. We tend to park up either along this road here or in this car park and yeah it's a lovely shallow shelving beach there are some rocks, some you know, some small rocks kind of up this north end, but a little bit further down, it's all lovely and clear. Pretty shallow shelving, so you know the uh, the wind, the waves tends to be fairly spread out. Um, nice hard pack sand for for land borders. Um, great little location. Again, at, at very spring high tides, there's no beach at all, so you really can't launch here. Spring high tides again, you know, you need to wait um, either side of. Um, either side of high tide. Um, this does just about cope with the south southwest, but again, it's a bit a bit gusty because it is coming off the land. Um, it's it's best in southerly, you know, through to your easterlies, round to your northeast. Um, this used to be a really really popular beach for kite surfing um, when there used to be a shop in Amble, um, but you know its popularity has has, dwine, has uh, dwindled somewhat um, in recent years. 
but yep, still a good location, and you know, not too far from Newcastle, a bit closer than driving up to, to Bean or somewhere like that. Um, there is the south end of, um, of Druidge Bay, you know, for the more northerly oriented uh, winds, um, very similar to, um, to the north end. Um, yeah, just another option for when, you know, you want the waves in a particular direction, or, yeah, it's quite a good place to go. So, let's move on. What have we got next? Um, Newbiggin. Now, Newbiggin's quite a nice little, um, quite a nice little bay, actually, and it's, it's not very commonly used. Um, there's free parking up here. Um, there's some pretty cool, actually, rock spits here, which give the bay some shelter. Again, it, it's quite popular with tourists, um, but, you know, nowhere near on the scale of Beadnell. It's very, very close to, to the town, so there's, you know, lots of amenities there. Um, you know, it's, it's quite a nice spot, I think. Um, you know, a nice, a nice breakwater here, which you can, you can play on the inside here. And there's this, um, uh, there's an artwork of a couple, uh, you can see it there just about. Um, which again, there's a breakwater here, protected water on the inside. It's, you know, it's quite a nice spot for some freestyle, I think. Um, again, sort of wind directions. Um, you know, you probably could get away with a, with a southwesterly up here, but it's come all the way over all of these all of these houses, so I wouldn't recommend it. Even south-southwest, it's come over quite a bit, so again, I wouldn't recommend it for that. Um, so southerly, round to maybe easterly, um, it's quite a good wind direction. Um, ideally, kind of a, a southeast means you're you know you're running up along the length of these breakwaters um, in the in the flats. So it's a pretty nice spot. In terms of um, in terms of launching and landing, there's always beach here, even at spring high tides. So it's great for that. Um, and yeah, at, at low tide, the water you know empties out quite a lot, and there's you know loads of shallow water especially around here um, for your tricks or anything like that great little beach and again not too far from Newcastle then we've got uh, Blythe next yep so the sort of north end of the beach is um, you know being so close to Blythe town um, is pretty pretty popular so it tends not to be used um, jet skis launch from from up here and you probably could get away with kite surfing, but it you know it is frowned upon. Um, where we generally go is down this south end. Uh, there's a gigantic car park here, um, which you can park up, just walk over the dunes. Um, again, with the sort of direction of this, kind of facing slightly north, sort of an east northeast northeasterly is straight on shore. Um, so sort of at low tide. Uh, when the tide's gone out it's kind of nice and shallow and um, you get some nice gaps between the waves but when it get, does get to high tide it does get pretty dumpy especially when there's a strong wind um, so it's probably best to, av to avoid it in, in high tides especially if you're a beginner um, because the, you know, it does get pretty dumpy there the one big advantage of Blythe is that there's always beach here uh, there's plenty of beach at high tide um, so it's a great option and again, free car parking close to Newcastle, um, and you know that's one of the reasons why it's it's you know it was a very very popular spot you know for you know, going to in the evenings after work. Um, but times have changed, and I don't think quite so many people ride here as as um, they used to be. Okay, so we have Whitley Bay and I don't know if many people really ride at Whitley Bay and I don't really know quite why I guess it is pretty popular with um, tourists and um, you know day trippers um, similarly um, we have uh, Tynemouth um, Long Sands is the bay which you know most uh, kiters ride at um, King Edwards is just too it's too small too enclosed um, but Tynemouth Long Sands is pretty good um, Tynemouth is quite expensive to park at. Um, there's also lots of people in the sea, many many surfers and surf schools. Um, there are some rocks um, to to be a little bit careful of. Um, 
So it, it's not ideal, but it is super, super close to town. And yeah, you can understand why it's popular because of that. Um, I think it's better off in the winter um, when it tends to be quieter. But yeah, great in uh, east northeast where it's straight on shore, um, all the way around through the north. You would have thought you probably could ride this in a in a southeasterly, but it tends to come over this headland and get a bit uh, get a bit turbulent. So ideally, you kind of want to wait for it to get to kind of east southeast or something like that before you ride there. Um, but yeah, time mouse a great option if you you know you don't have much time um, or you're saving your petrol. Um, but as I say. Parking is quite expensive. I think it's ATP an hour currently. So, yeah, you you know you pay, you know you pay for it, and yeah, you tend not to be able to park all that um, all that near to the beach. Uh, generally, the best car parking sort of usually around here. Uh, you need to be careful because there are permit areas and things like that for the for the local residents. Sometimes you can be parked all the way up here somewhere in order to get a spot on a on a busy day.